I got to admit, I got a little something about trained games. There's just something so cozy about them all. The sort of safe plays balancing high level autism with micromanaging rails and finance. What more can you ask for? Railroad Tycoon 3 is a true example of a great train game, but Simutrans definitely takes my most invest amount of time invest. Both share deep and complex systems of building railroad networks and managing convoluted fleets of engines. And this is a large part of the enjoyment you can get out of these games. But what if rather than laying out careful planning to maximize network layouts and rail usage, while keeping finance in equilibrium is not the only way to play train games? I know, shocker. We have games that, in fact, take it to a whole new level of self-observing narcissism like Train Simulator 2020 and it's over 580 DLCs racking up a total of 10 grands of real money as in actual cash dollar. You know, I'm too broke to even consider pirating it at this point, so let's set our sight on something less puzzling than choosing between a brand new car or what every AAA studio is striving for in this day and age. And the game as you can read today is Train Valley 2. I would like to extend my thanks to Flasm for offering me a free copy of it last year. Very appreciated, but as usual this will not affect my perception of the game. Train Valley 2 is the follow-up of the first version that was released in 2015, this one in 2018. In essence, both games are very similar, I generally don't even know what the difference is, even after researching in the depth of the web, so really there's only one way to find out. The gameplay is pretty simple, rather than an in-depth tycoon game we have something more akin to a puzzle with a bit of economy sprinkled over it. Depending on the map you pick and play, you'll get a couple of things, but generally all scenarios have pretty static layouts. You'll get one or more towns, and these will be the core of your network. They create a demand for diverse resources and supply labor for factories. The factories are scattered around the map and can create assorted goods. A simple chain will be laborers into a lumber camp to create timber, then sent to sawmill with more laborers to obtain lumber. More complex routines also exist, such as sand into glass, combined with a mixture of coal and gold producing gold bars that is then transmuted together into jewelry. But as a rule of thumb, everything you require is available on the map. You have to simply connect the rails in an efficient fashion to deliver the goods and laborers to their destination. The mechanism is pretty simple. Once there is at least one resource at a site, you can click on it to dispatch a train that will take the rail. The train will follow whatever path you have laid out and will employ the arrows at intersections. These arrows will change depending on your clicks, as well as any train coming off a branch will force the arrows in the way they use. You'll have to game around a bit with your contraption of rail set and arrows to lead your trains to their final destination. Delivering goods and laborers to a place that accepts them will give you some cash. While not good enough for 580 DLCs, they will be good enough to expand your rail network and upgrade your trains or even buy brand new engines for the remaining of the map you are on. The more you play, the more intricate the chains you have to complete will become and the terrain will become much more difficult to navigate. While the first few missions will have relatively flat planes that are easy to plan a layout with interchanges, the more you progress in the game, the more the geology will force you to compromise between extremely expensive bridges and even more unaffordable tunnels. On top of that, you will have to make serpentine interchange to allow your trains to exchange on the right tracks, 
and this is what most of the game will be about. Establishing a layout and committing to it fully to fulfill every city's requirement. On top of completing all the reefs, each map will have an extra challenge that will grant you stars. These go from completing all maps without sending a train in the wrong location to completing the maps in crazy short amount of time while avoiding crashes. The stars you gain will allow you to both unlock new levels and upgrade your locomotives, so trying to maximize your gain in each level is ideal to obtain better trains. The game starts becoming increasingly more difficult as you keep playing, as each new level will throw a wrench of complexity to account for, and this is what makes this game so good in my opinion. While keeping the basics very simple, the pausing nature will drive you to redo levels to ace them out and for a good reason. The graphics are earring on a childish side, but you are just planning on laying out tracks and dispatching trains, so you do not need graphics at the level of transport fever or anything like that. Likewise, the music is decent and sounds help tremendously, as the later you get in the game, it will start giving you cues as to what action you can take, since trains completing delivery will make a sound, and trains crashing together will also make quite a noise. Enclosure Train Valley 2 is a splendid puzzle game, but if you are looking for an intricate transport simulation, this game is most definitely not the right title for you. But that is alright because this game is not attempting any of this. This is a game that happens to have trains and puzzles in it, and it's just dandy that way. Hopefully you've enjoyed this quick review of Train Valley 2, and if you did, make sure to subscribe for more, and maybe watch out another video about trains that I've made. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.